Hey everyone, it's Victoria, and I want to talk to you post uh, 100K win. I can't believe I won first place. But then again, if I think about it, I did the training. I was out there every day while people were eating their lunch. I was out there running in hot weather, like 98 degrees Fahrenheit, 102 degrees Fahrenheit, and I was out there for two to three hours a day, so sometimes more, and sometimes I would do doubles, which was like 10 miles in the morning, five miles at night, or something like that. Oh my God, my camera just fell. Funky is that. So, you know, I mean, I was out there putting in the miles, and I was also smart about my nutrition. I had fruit, and what I mean by fruit was dates with most compact, easy, to handle fruit that I could bring. Uh, a lot of people bring bananas with them, you know, midway they'll, they'll go and stop off somewhere and get bananas. I don't tend to, you know, think about the food like that. I just want to bring something that's portable and easy to manage and that digests really well. So dates really digest well. So I guess instead of reading about my race report, I guess I can also vlog about it and tell you about it right now. Uh, when I got to the race at around 8 o'clock at night, uh, the night before, it was late and we had been in traffic for so long, my husband and I and the kids were in traffic and what happened was we ended up getting there so late that we missed all the drop-off for the drop-off bags. Now, in an ultra marathon, what you do is you drop off bags and you have little packets of your stuff that you could easily get, you know, at an aid station when you go and then they have your names on it and everything. I don't know how many were in total, but they managed to really do a great job. I have to give kudos and really big thanks to everybody on that team in Vermont. I tell you, they were superb, amazing human beings. They, First of all, every single um, dollar the proceeds go to disabled children you know, in athletic events. I think that's amazing right there. I didn't even know that. And I'm just so happy I did it even more so. But besides that, the director of the race and, and the man that, that fixes you up with pacers, that man volunteered to take my drop-off bags to the stations, the aid stations. And, you know, they were miles apart. And he went up the mountain and did that for me. And I was just so flattered. And I think the most important bag would be the nighttime bag where you have a headlamp because you're going to be out there late at night. I didn't even know if mine was going to work. My pacer, Charlie, was with me, whom I met literally the night before the race. He saw my videos and said, I recognize you, you're Victoria, and I was just so happy because we were like a match made in heaven. It was just something from heaven. And I had spoken to him two days earlier and knew right away, because I can read people pretty easily, and knew right away after talking to him for one minute, I said, you're perfect for me. You're going to pace me. And, you know, ever since then, he's like, he was like the best guy for me. Um, hmm. So, now that I had that going on, I slept in a tent with my kids, which is not optimal. And I had to wake up at 3 in the morning because, not because my race started, my race started at 9, but the 100 miler people, and I think the people on the horses, there was a horse race too, on the same course, uh, beautiful course, by the way. Spectacular views, unbelievable. But anyway, they had to go before me, and you know, there was a lot of noise and excitement, and I was happy for them and everything, but I needed my sleep. Also, I was on a slant, so I kept sliding down in my tent, which wasn't optimal. Okay, so then we had that. Um, I took some caffeine tablets. You know, I would have, if I had done it over again, I wouldn't have as many, and I don't even know if I would have any, because in all my training runs, I never had any caffeine at all. I don't, I don't subscribe to caffeine, um, but when you really have no sleep and you are desperate, you kind of sell your soul to the devil, and <laughs> you want to get through. So now, um, I had not listened to the meeting, I had not gone to the meeting the night before, and I did not know that I couldn't listen to music. So there I was with headphones on the first two miles and someone said, you know, you can't listen to music. I was like, whoa, wait a minute, 62 miles and I can't listen to music? Oh my God, I don't know what I'm going to do. Luckily, something happened where I was not even interested in music. Um, this girl, Nora Ball, 
know who you are. She actually um, ran a alongside me and we became friends while we were running and we had like a good 28 miles together which was solid you know because um, even if she couldn't keep up or I couldn't keep up the second half of the race you get your pacer and the pacer waits for you at the aid station and it was just so great because even though I was sad that she didn't keep up with me um, she wasn't that far behind but she didn't keep up um, I still wanted to win the race so I wanted to come in top three and I was in top three so I wanted to keep going and um, I really missed running with her but my pacer was just as great and you know we were just having a great time I mean I saw I, I saw I, I had salt pills and my stomach was so bloated by the time my husband overlapped his race into my race first of all he's like I'm shocked I'm shocked you're up here at this time it's still daylight it was amazing but my stomach was so bloated he was like whoa what happened to you I said I know I took salt pills on top of dates and bad chemistry set you know I mean I was gassy I was thank God my pacer and I were laughing about the fact that I was like you know making a little bit of noise with my gas but anyway it doesn't matter so we ended up having a really good time and it was I was happy to see my husband up there and the fact that he ran 135 miles in bad water three days earlier than that is just cuckoo insane. But he was still, you know, taking it slow, but still did a great 18-hour race in Vermont in his 100-miler. And I ended up doing uh, 14 hours and 20 minutes. And the person behind me, well, I think I saw somebody that was ahead of me. I wasn't sure if I was first, second, or third. I mean, I wasn't sure if I was second or third. And then I saw somebody walking who I, I thought was in first place. I wasn't sure yet. And then I just kept going and going and going because I still had a, I had a second wind. And my pacer was trying to keep up with me. And then I was trying to go even faster because I didn't know who was behind me, if it was a 100 miler or it was a 100K female. So I wanted to really keep up. And he said, listen, at this point, you're probably winning. You can just walk at this point. And I was like, I'm not walking. I wanted to finish at a good time also. So I wasn't going to break 14 hours, but I was happy with 15. I didn't know what to expect in a race like this. I was just really happy to be there and finish and to have this experience. So there I was, you know, uh, coming in top three, and then I was first place because the people at the aid station said, first female, 5K. I said, me? I looked around. I was like, is he talking to me? Yeah! So... <clears throat> you know at every aid station like would you like something to eat you want pretzels you want this you want that I'm like no I have my dates and I had a big thing of dates I couldn't um, I, I didn't know when I was gonna get my next meal because I didn't know where my stuff was at the aid stations and I didn't really have time to look I also didn't want to change my clothes even though they were wet it was keeping me cool but I didn't want to stop for long you know I did stop for long at one of the aid stations a little too long looking for my stuff and I was like you know what forget it I'm not gonna do that again so that took a good five six minutes out of my run and I knew that I know what to do next time the weather was great the people were great it was just a really good vibe um, at night it gets a little dangerous because um, you're you're running with a headlamp and you just really have this little lamp and I never ran like that before except for an ultra that was flat and I didn't even know I was walking most of the time that time anyway but this time I was running because I really wanted to win and it was just so elation I mean that's the word I, I, I felt elation I felt like you know what I really I want to spread the word of fruit I want to get the word out there I want it to be something that everyone can achieve I don't want to just say it's my win you know it's a uh, it's a feeling of wanting to give back and pay it forward and show people that it works. I really, really believe that if you have the right glucose in your body, you could do anything. You could study longer for your tests. You can go through your classes longer. You could do anything. Just you have enough glucose in your brain and in your muscles and you just keep going. But don't be afraid to eat it. You know, people are afraid to eat sugar and it's the thing that we need most we don't need a piece of fish we don't need a piece of chicken we might be told that you know you need the protein and everything but you don't need that much protein you just really need the glucose 
we run on glucose and anything else has to convert into glucose it's just going to tax your body these are the messages I want to send out to you please friend me on Facebook or you know go to my page on Facebook called one fruit at a time O-N-E spelled or uh, go to my website one fruit at a time dot com and subscribe to these videos and I'll just give you free health and fitness tips daily probably on one fruit at a time on Facebook I'm always there so I hope that if you find it in you to do more than you think you can you probably can do more than you think you can because we're the only ones who block ourselves and I'm telling you I never had a running background in my life and I won 100k okay you could do this take care bye